Hi, and welcome back to a series I'm doing in complex analysis. Today we're going to be working with the following problem. Suppose that f is some analytic or holomorphic function in a neighborhood of some annulus. And I'll go ahead and try and draw that for you. So we have an inner radius of 1, outer radius of 4, and then we know that it's analytic in some neighborhood of this, so it's analytic on the annulus itself. And I might also write the annulus like that. So we also know that uh, the modulus of f is bounded above by 1 on this inner radius, so here, and it's bounded above by 16, which seems like a pretty random number on the outer radius here. And the problem is asking us to prove something kind of weird as well. It's asking us to prove that the modulus of f of 3i is bounded above by 9. But upon first glance, we're not really sure what this has to do with anything. So let's talk about a couple strategies we might have. So when I first looked at this problem, I thought I might do it um, using the Schwartz lemma. But then you kind of remember that uh, the Schwartz lemma only deals with uh, maps that are from the disk to itself. And we also don't know anything about where this map might send zero. Uh, in a previous video, I talked about how you might use conformal maps to change certain problems into using into, into a problem which uh, the Schwartz lemma might be applicable to. But in this case, uh, it's kind of non-trivial to see that you don't necessarily know, um, you don't actually have any conformal maps from the annulus to the disk. Go ahead and try and prove it yourself. Uh, like I said, it's a non-trivial result, but it is true. So you can't use the Schwartz lemma, which is disappointing. The second thing I thought of was the Cauchy estimate, but can't use the Cauchy estimate either because really it only deals with bounding your derivatives of some function at a point C naught, right? So it's not super helpful either way, and maybe I'm just not being clever enough, but the only way that I could really find to solve this, um, consulting some resources as well, was actually the maximum modulus principle. So that's counterintuitive, and let's kind of recall what the maximum modulus principle says. It says um, if f is analytic, um, and let's say it's defined on some region omega, it's complex valued, and is non-constant, then f uh, attains its maximum on the boundary of omega. Okay, um, so we could also kind of flip that on its head and we could say, well, if f attains its uh, maximum inside omega, then f is actually a constant function. So let's take a look at the maximum modulus principle in the light of this problem. And the pattern that you kind of have to see, which is unfortunately the reason I don't really like this problem, is that uh, you're dealing with squares here. So we have 1 and 1, we have 4 and 16, we have 3i and 9. So in other words, we could say we have, you know, 4 uh, squared is 16, right? I guess I could just write an equal sign. 1 squared is 1. And then let's pretend just 3 squared is, is 9. So in some way, I have to incorporate this map z squared. And I'm not really sure how to do that yet. But if I want to use the maximum modulus principle, then maybe the way to do it is to set some function equal to f and then divide by what I want so that I get my inequalities in a much nicer way. And I'll show you why I might have done this. So let's, let's look at uh, this when uh, z, when the modulus of z is 4. So the modulus of g when z is 4, well, that's still going to be, you know, uh, f of z uh, over z squared. But we know that the modulus of f of z uh, when z is 4 is bounded above by 16. And similarly, z modulus of z squared is 16 as well. So this is just 1. And if we do the same thing for when z is 1 on the inner radius of the annulus, then we get that g is similarly bounded above by 1. Which means that on the entire annulus, so on the annulus, g is bounded above by 1, and that's by the maximum modulus principle. So if we assume that f is uh, non-constant, then we know that we can apply that to g as well, and we know that it's, g is holomorphic as well because it's only 
singularities are at, z are at zero, right? Because And so it's still analytic on our annulus. And that means that g since g is uh, bounded above by one uh, on the boundary of the annulus, everywhere on the boundary, on the, both the inner and outer radii, then g is bounded above by one on the entire annulus. So substituting back in, we get f of z over z squared is bounded above by one on the entire annulus, which means that f of z is bounded above by z squared on the entire annulus. So then we've actually proved a stronger result than what the problem is asking us to show. But if we plug back in for 3i, then we get f of 3i, the modulus, is bounded above by the modulus of 3i squared, which is just 9. And we're done.